start with big news coming in from Pakistan. Vion has accessed a joint investigation team report into allegations of illegal business operations of Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his family. The JIT, constituted by Pakistan Supreme Court, was given 60 days' time to complete their probe. In the past few weeks, the Prime Minister's uh, family was being questioned by the JIT. Sharif's family had objected to the conduct of the JIT, but the Apex Court rejected that objection. And now it emerged uh, that Nawaz's family used a complex web of companies from Saudi Arabia to the United Kingdom and swindled money from banks and financial institutions. Opposition leader PDI Chief Imran Khan has now demanded that Nawaz Sharif immediately step down. All right, let's get in. Uh, we own Pakistan Bureau Chief Taha Siddiqui is joining us live right now for uh, the more details. In fact, after this GIT report, uh, the contents of it have come out online. Uh, what does this mean? What is going to be the next step, Taha, for the Pakistani Prime Minister? Well, uh, as we speak right now, uh, the the Pakistani uh, uh, the closest aides of the Pakistani Prime Minister, which include the Defence Minister, which includes the Planning Minister, Federal Ministers, and other uh, legal advisors, they're uh, right now holding a press conference. And uh, this press conference, Sana, came after a, a consultative meeting that went on at the Prime Minister House. Uh, and following that, uh, uh, I mean, the next step for them, it seems and it appears from the, 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 the sort of the communication that the ministers right now are doing is that uh, they will, uh, they have rejected uh, the joint investigation team report and they are going to challenge it. Now, uh, when, the, uh, when today the Supreme Court uh, received the report, it was in session and then it adjourned the session till July 17th. Uh, which is another seven days. And basically, uh, on that day, the, the Supreme Court is to decide what next to do. But from what we understand, the joint investigation team has said that there should be a further sort of a reference filed against the prime minister and his children, uh, two of his sons and daughter, uh, at the National Accountability Bureau, which deals in uh, investigating public office holders for corruption or for money laundering or for any other such charges. And that investigation will, will be ensued over the there. So basically right now, the Supreme Court, uh, all eyes will be on the, at the Supreme Court as to how it responds to this JIT on July 17th. Absolutely. But Taha, isn't, uh, you know, the fact that the JIT clearly implicates Nawaz Sharif. We've been talking about the fact how he hasn't been directly named, uh, you know, as a direct offender when this whole investigation uh, started about. But it clearly says that companies incorporated in the 1980s and 90s, that is the time when Nawaz Sharif held public office. So this is big then. And we've talked about how this entire case has dented Nawaz Sharif's image, his popularity and his power, so to speak, in Pakistan. This this surely comes as another big body blow for Nawaz Sharif. Uh, definitely, uh, Sana, from what we, uh, from what I'm gathering here in Pakistan, talking to analysts, and it's, this is not just analysts which are politically opposed or in any way very neutral sort of uh, people on on uh, from you know from uh, different backgrounds uh, they, they basically are all uh, recommending and are all asking for the Pakistani Prime Minister to step down. And they're saying that, uh, you know, earlier on when the, uh, the Supreme Court case had happened, when the Panama leaks had surfaced last year at that time, and then the Supreme Court investigation ensued. And, and, and then uh, basically the Supreme Court had said that three out of two, there was a five member be bench, and three out of two, had, three had said that there should be further investigation by this JIT, and two had already at that time said that the prime minister should be disqualified. So we've come back to the same old sort of that thing, which was 60 days before this GIT was formed, this joint, joint investigation team was formed to have this mandate of investigating the PM and his family. And now uh, almost there is sort of a union in, and, and uh, across the board in Pakistan uh, saying that Pakistani Prime Minister has lost all moral authority and he should resign. But as I was mentioning earlier, the Prime Minister and the, the, the ruling party do not look like they're in that mood where they want to resign, they want to fight it out. And they're calling this a political conspiracy. They're saying that there are other hidden agendas behind it, obviously hinting at uh, the military being behind it, uh, using PTI, which is uh, Pakistan Tari Kinsaf, Imran Khan's party and saying that Pakistan Tehreek-e-Saab is being used against us and this is a political sort of uh, uh, 
a political victimization of ours rather than a financial investigation because uh, uh, the, the, the GIT did not have the kind of mandate. Again, I mean, those are excuses that are coming mm. from the government. Across the board, sort of, we are heading up off this factor that the Prime Minister should resign. Absolutely. And Taha, you've been tracking all these developments right from the very beginning, very, very closely. And we've heard voices from on the ground in Pakistan, people reposing their faith in the judiciary in Pakistan and saying that let the law take its own course. Now, do you think a lot will depend? There have been calls for Nawaz Sharif to step down. Nawaz Sharif and his party has been defiant. But what happens on the 17th of July? Should the Supreme Court come out and uh, give out a negative verdict against the Prime Minister? A lot would you say will depend on what happens then? Well, uh, Sana, I was talking to some legal experts here as to what the legal procedure would be. Now, there is definitely the political aspect of it, and we're seeing that the political response from uh, Nawaz Sharif and his uh, ruling party is that they're rejecting this report and they're not going to accept it and they're going to fight it. Uh, but at the same time, the legal experts, what they're saying is that that now it, it has come back to the Supreme Court, the joint, joint investigation team report has come back to it, and now the Supreme Court can uh, review its uh, earlier decision and earlier order uh, when it had it had favor it ruled in favor of the Pakistani Prime Minister three to two and probably revisit that and it can happen that they might say that uh, given all of these circumstances given all the new uh, sort of uh, you know uh, findings of the GIT uh, in which they could not assert it even though the the Prime Minister's family was uh, came in for questioning the Prime Minister's uh, le legal aides Prime Minister's uh, close friends all of them were called in for questioning but they could not give any satisfaction satisfactory response to the money trail that went out of Pakistan and went to uh, these uh, offshore companies and these flats that these properties that they have in UK so given all of that uh, there is a chance that uh, the, the Pakistani Prime Minister uh, I mean uh, the Supreme Court might say that he, he might be he's just he's disqualified from his position so that is one option or one avenue mm. Uh, that some legal experts are looking at that the Supreme Court might revisit that and say that okay now we are we're back to where we were started before these 60 days and he's he stands disqualified now and he will have to face the investigation while he's disqualified the other point of view or the other sort of school of thought in this regard is that the prime Pakistani Prime Minister may uh, continue in office while facing this uh, ac accountability sort of probe against him uh, right. which is which to be a kind of a criminal investigation against him and given all of that does he have any moral authority left to stay in office that is the big question also being asked here absolutely and especially by the opposition pakistan tehreek e insaf now imran khan has once again come out conducted a press conference taha we are hearing claimed that nawaz sharif has been looting the country for the past three decades and he should have already resigned on moral ground something that he's been saying right from the start at the time when the panama papers leaked but what does this mean for uh, Imran Khan's party. Well, uh, Sana, uh, one thing is, is for sure that, I mean, in some way, Imran Khan, what he has been saying and his party has been saying, and, and he's, he's leading the biggest political opposition in the country uh, on streets uh, actively and inside the parliament also. He's been saying that the prime minister should go home uh, and the prime minister uh, and and basically so so now his sort of his view on things and his sort of uh, claims uh, are have been sort of strengthened and they've gotten more strength from from the from the report that has come out uh, now going forward uh, basically, we've seen that in the past that Imran Khan in the past has also, when, whenever such a, a situation had arise, he, he called in for massive protest across the country and he has that kind of street power. So uh, it might uh, go towards that confrontation because as we were speaking earlier, Sana, uh, the Pakistani uh, Prime Minister and the ruling party are not backing out. Uh, right. They do not want to move, go towards the option of uh, the Prime Minister resigning and then facing the investigation. So it could lead to further political sort of clashes and that could be on right. the streets parliament and that's what we we'll probably be, would be seeing in the coming okay. days okay uh, taha do stay with me i'm going to come back to you mr taj heather uh, who's a senator and a senior leader with the ppp bhutto party leads the opposition in the parliament is now joining us on the phone line thanks so much mr heather what do you make of these developments what does this jit report now coming out mean for the pakistani prime minister uh, you, you know the background of the matter. Uh, the matter is already before the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Uh, 
two judges, two senior judges of the bench, have already disqualified the Prime Minister, but three others wanted to have more investigations into the matter. Now, uh, they uh, established, they constituted this joint investigation team, and the joint investigation team has given its report, and uh, uh, that report is now before the Supreme Court, and it has, has also been circulated as mm. uh, per the requirements of the law to all the parties of the case. And uh, uh, let us see what the Supreme Court decides on it. Right. But the fact that, you know, uh, it, the report itself seems to implicate the Pakistani Prime Minister. It says that, uh, you know, companies were incorporated in the 80s and 90s when he held public office and money was swindled uh, via even, uh, you know, to... Uh, Funds from offshore companies were used to buy expensive properties in the UK. And, uh, you know, Nawaz Sharif and Hussein Nawaz Sharif are the re recipients of funds moving into Pakistan as gifts or loans. Now, these are big findings that have been put down in this joint investigation report. How do you see this going forward? Uh, uh, we are hearing that Nawaz Sharif is going to challenge this. The P uh, PTI is calling for his resignation. Uh, what, what is your party's stance, sir? Uh, well, these are things that were very well known, and uh, investigations have been uh, carried out during the uh, past uh, tenure of Shahid uh, Motama bin Zayed And most of the contents of the report are based on the, on the investigations that have been carried out by the government of uh, Shahid bin Zayed uh, back in 1996. So uh, these are things that everybody knew in advance. Uh -huh. uh, the personality of the Prime Minister of Pakistan, the person of the Prime Minister of Pakistan, was uh, already under question. And uh, what we had uh, advised the Prime Minister publicly was that uh, he should resign right. until the time his name was cleared. Okay. And uh, the Prime Minister chose not to do so. And so the of appearing Absolutely, before. he remains defiant. Sir, do stay with me. Uh, uh, Fawad Chaudhry, who's a, a spokesperson for uh, Pakistan, Tehri Khe Insaf, is also on the phone line with us. Mr. Chaudhry, this is something, uh, you know, that the PTI, other opposition parties have been saying for a while. Imran Khan says that our apprehensions have been proven correct. Uh, how would you react to the contents of this JIT report? Mr. Fawad Chaudhry, are you with us? Mr. Chaudhry. All right, we'll try and reconnect uh, with the PTI spokesperson in just a bit. But uh, coming back to you, Mr. Heather, do you think this is the end of the Sharif government or uh, Nawaz Sharif will continue to hold office and challenge, uh, you know, whatever the Supreme Court says on the July 17th? What's going to happen next? No, the democracy in Pakistan uh, shall continue. Uh, at the most, uh, another part, uh, and that's what we have advised, that some other uh, elected member of the Pakistan Muslim League can be appointed by Prime Minister, and so the system continues. While uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif faces the courts, and uh, whatever the, the courts decide is implemented. I mean, the matter has been politicized too much. But the point is that there are accusations against the Prime Minister, uh, which are very really valid accusations. The JIT, the two senior judges, have held that uh, those accusations are correct. JIT report also says the same thing. Now, let's see what's the final decision of right. the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Also, also and if the Supreme Court of Pakistan owns him guilty, then, of course, seeing disqualified and somebody else can take over. Absolutely. My last question to you, Mr. Taj Heather. Do you think that by not stepping down earlier, Nawaz Sharif, in case the verdict goes against him, has already and then will hurt his image, his position of power more, uh, you know, by not stepping down? And that is going to massively hurt his prospects, his party's prospects in elections which are scheduled next year. Uh, I'm afraid the voice is not very clear, but what is happening in Pakistan right now and what uh, uh, really uh, I'm concerned about is that uh, the functioning of the government has been badly affected. Uh, 
uh, the uh, session of the Senate had to start today, but the government opted it uh, not to uh, call the session of the Senate. Also, we have a calendar, and according to that calendar, at the start of the parliamentary year, uh, the dates of all the sessions are given. So the opposition, I have signed a requisition of the Senate today, uh, with signature of the 33 members, to call a session of the Senate and one of the points uh, in our agenda is discussion on the GIT report. All so right. let us see how things go. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Taj Haider, appreciate you uh, joining us and sharing your thoughts, uh, your perspective, your party's perspective with our viewers. I'd also like to thank Weon's Pakistan Bureau Chief Taha Siddiqui for uh, getting us details on this big story.